All right, now the sports card industry has taken a major hit over the past 15 years. In its heyday in the early 90s, sports card revenue peaked at $1.2 billion. Now, most experts say the industry is just a quarter of that. Well, Major League Baseball is trying to jumpstart the market, recently making tops the exclusive or giving tops the exclusive rights to use team logos, uniforms, and trademarks. And joining me now to discuss the sports card industry and how this new deal may impact the market is Tops General Manager Warren Frisch. He runs the sports card side of Tops, now a private company owned by a group, including former Walt Disney CEO Michael Eisner. Thanks for joining us, Warren. Thank you. Let me first ask about the idea that giving Tops a monopoly is going to boost uh, revenue for the industry. You are effectively the industry now, at least as far as baseball cards go. Do you think that's the way to go about it? Uh, yeah, I think it's a very important first step. Um, the market has suffered because there have been so many brands in the marketplace. So if you walked into a store right now, you would see multiple brands of baseball cards. And as we're trying to get kids to be more interested in cards, it's important that it's simpler, uh, less overwhelming for them to get started in collecting. But why is that? I mean, I remember when my kid brother was collecting cards and pretty much everybody was going crazy about baseball cards. My friends in college were selling them to buy cars. Uh, there were a number of different brands. You had Fleer, you had Upper Deck, you had Tops, and it seemed like the industry was flourishing then. Yeah. Well, the cards that were really valuable even back then were really the, the earlier cards that Tops did from the 50s and 60s. So um, in, in that period of time, there were so many cards offered in the late 80s and early 90s. Those cards really aren't valuable today. Um, so we need to get back to a place where the kids have fun collecting, can play games with their cards, and make it not about the money. One thing it was about uh, at the time was stats of the player. You could figure out what you know, how many RBIs he had, how many home runs he hit, what his ERA was uh, if he was a pitcher. Now that kind of information is more available online, does that take away a little bit from demand, you think, for the cards? Uh, it, it takes away from uh, the cards a little bit, but we have to change what we're doing. So uh, now with, a, with your cards, you could go online and get up-to-date stat statistics. Um, you could play games with your cards. You could do more fun things um, because we need to change because of you know, the things you're saying. An interesting idea that you guys have had is digital online card trading. Explain to, to us how that works because you can't obviously take uh, a digital card to school and show to your friends, and I would assume you could make copies of a digital card, sure. which would mean they're not quite as rare. Yeah. Uh, the way it works is if you buy Topps packs, you get a code card in every pack, you go online, and it unlocks a virtual pack of cards with eight new digital cards. Um, you look at your cards, you check them out, you see which ones you want, and then you can trade with anybody anywhere in the world um, to try and get the cards that you want if you, don't have, uh, if you don't have the ones you want. So basically, we just transfer your digital card to you know, a kid somewhere else, um, and uh, you can trade with anybody in the world. You're trying to drive the business basically to the kids more than the adults, but the adults were really the big collectors. Obviously, no kid is going to get in a car and drive to a convention, right? Do you think that the online strategy is the way to do that? I mean, is that the big push for the kids? Uh, that is the big push for the kids. Uh, we're not going to forget the collectors, and we do lots of things like autograph cards and relic cards for the collector, but we really look at it as there are two different markets, the collector and the kids, and we need to do uh, things online to make sure we bring back the kids. Let me quickly ask you, you're doing a line of financial miscreants, which I think everybody would find interesting. I'm sure Nick Leeson will be in there, Ken Lay, etc. But there's no Bernie Madoff. Isn't he the number one financial villain in the world? Uh, he certainly is, but uh, our licensors uh, weren't happy with us including Bernie Madoff, so he, we decided to shelve that for now. Does it come with gum? Uh, that one does not come with gum. <laughs> no, no gum in the, no in the financial, <laughs> financial yeah. criminals. Couldn't afford it. Interesting. All right, we look forward to it. Thanks so much, Warren Friss uh, Thank from Tops. Carol?